Hello and welcome to the stream where we're going to look at how to play the best games ever on the best operating system ever and that is of course OpenBSD. Um, we are going to start the series with a little bit of like talking about the um, screen recording setup um, the and then the, the first game is going to be um, Planescape Torment, um, an all-time classic RPG um, played via the GemRB port. Um, so OpenBSD is not exactly known for like being a gaming platform, although we are working on improving the situation step by step. Um, one of the limitations is that uh, uh, some there, the performance is not um, one hundred percent what it is on other comparable platforms like Linux. Um, some uh, like proprietary games, of course, are not ported. Uh, so for gaming on the platform, you need to rely on source ports, on open source games, on emulators. Um, but yeah, this one makes for a good start. The screen recording too is not. Um, has its limitations. I'm using FFmpeg uh, uh, with uh, like a monitoring stream on SNDIO. Um, I'll show you the setup in a little bit. Uh, first of all, um, if you want to do this, uh, go get uh, the GemRB port. It can be simply added by doing a package at uh, GemRB. This here is the web page. GemRB is an open source Plat an open source uh, source port of the, the Infinity Engine. It can run besides Blitzkrieg Farm. It can run Baldur's Gate one and two, Icewind Dale, and I think that's it. So this is the web page. Um, uh, li latest version is 0.8.5. Um, to get it, you uh, can get Blitzkrieg Farm from your uh, GOG account, for example, it's on sale there regularly, or I think Steam, like files from Steam should also work. Here you're going to need the asset files, essentially, the, the engine is going to be uh, provided by HMRB, but you're still going to need all the assets, meaning like the sounds, the uh, graphics, the video files, the scripts probably. Um, so here um, you would then download the files. Um, if you download from uh, GOG, um, you can download for Windows or Linux. Um, Mac is probably not feasible to, to get the assets from, or it might be very complicated given the difference in like the archive formats that they use. And I've honestly it ne never really tried it. Um, if you download um, the files from uh, the Windows version, um, there is a tool called Inno Extract that you can use to get the files actually out of this. This is how you install it, uh, just with a duos package add Inno Extract, and then you just run Inno Extract with the file name as a parameter, and it's going to extract all the files that are in there for you. Um, alternatively, you can download the Linux files, and uh, they are usually inside a um, uh, a file that ends in .sh, um, which contains uh, a self-extracting uh, archive. Uh, the um, it's called Mojo something, a uh, Mojo installer, I think. Uh, anyhow, it. It's essentially just a zip uh, compressed file with a header, so uh, you can uh, just run unzip uh, and, uh, on the file, on the .sh file, and um, then you should be getting the contents. There seem to be some changes um, uh, with like including the GOG Galaxy client. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to affect um, the don't mind my cat that is trying to become part of the stream. But um, there was, seem to be some changes with including GOG Galaxy Client. Uh, I haven't looked at that yet, so if there's any problems, maybe you may want to mention it at the end of the video. So 
this is how you get the game files and then you need to set up the uh, config file so uh, I have the games in like the games gmrb folder and um, this is how you can copy um, the template from that's installed in etc gmrb uh, to a new file um, and after that we're going to take a look at what's in there um, I've already made the adjustments so here are several game types um, I would recommend having a torment that's CFG and game type needs to be PST, which stands for uh, Planescape Torment. The game name doesn't really matter as what the window is going to be named, but it doesn't have any functional impact. Um, you can choose different parameters for the video resolution, uh, screen width, etc. Uh, unfortunately, Planescape Torment so far only like um, uh, like can do 640 by 480. Uh, I tried the higher resolutions, but then the menus are end up in weird places and um, just doesn't work. I set it to full screen, but the recording tested it should still capture the whole gameplay. Audio driver, I tested SDL audio and OpenAL. Um, I think it defaults to OpenAL. Uh, I didn't see much of a difference in terms of speed. It's SDL1 in this case, so um, maybe with the move to SDL2, once that is uh, enabled, uh, we'll get better performance. I'm not sure, the videos do stutter a little bit. You'll notice some issues with the sound quality. Uh, and other than that, you just need to provide the game path. The CD paths, you don't need them here, just as it's shown here, a game path to where you have installed um, PST. If you extract the files from the gog.com, source then uh, you may need to add an app subfolder subfolder uh, just look at where the the actual game files are let's move on so this is uh, how I did the screen recording these are the flags for SMDIRD if you set those with RCCTL then um, you uh, should restart the SMDIRD daemon uh, and here is my little screen recording program that uses FFmpeg. FFmpeg is also in ports, so you can just uh, do as package add uh, FFmpeg if you don't have it on your system yet, but chances are you already do. So as you can see here, uh, there's two SNDIO streams. The monitoring stream records the um, the 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 systems or the games um, audio. The the other stream here is the recording of my my blaring, my talking, uh, and then there's the screen grab resolution 640 by 480. The performance isn't really great, so when I started to go above um, something like uh, 1280 by 720, uh, the like the sound uh, timing didn't really fit and it di didn't really produce a usable result but uh, this one should work with a frame rate other than 60 because that's the display refresh rate uh, there seem to be more issues with sound stuttering so uh, and you need map 0 map 1 map 2 if you have um, two streams um, like in this case two audio streams uh, and essentially I called this to start the screen recording um, and yeah here is what you would call to actually then start the game which we're going to do now and then you should be now seeing the intro playing um, I'll skip the black hole you may notice some sound stuttering here um, throughout the videos, unfortunately, I don't know how that compares to other platforms. Uh, here's the actual game. I'll leave that running for a little bit longer, but the sound here also starts to like echo, or stutter, or skip. the 
main character here in a moment, being moved into the more It takes place in, I think the name of the city or the plane is Sigil. I'm not really into the uh, whole Planescape universe uh, outside of this game. I don't really have that much background information. It's been a long time that I actually played through it. So the character is kind of like going through his memories from I guess former incarnations probably learn more about this as the game continues. Okay, so I'm twitching. past experiences. This should essentially be the intro. Oh, well, just a little more. Since this is one of the zombies or ghouls, I forgot what their name is, that are kind of doing the, the dirty work in the work. Okay, and here's the main screen. You can see developed by Plague Isle. They've also done I think they've also done Belder Skate and uh, other stuff at the time. Uh, so yeah, and here we start a new live. Resume live is if you have a save game, which I have not yet. Um, the Abyss just means exit game. I guess that's the being artists and they don't call it that. And here's the new character screen. So notice you can't name it. This is already something that distinguishes this game from uh, Elder Skate, for example. Um, and that's actually a big topic in the game, as far as I re recall it. As I said, it's been it's probably been 15 years ago, I think, that I played through it. And you know, time flies. Um, note that this is an RPG, but it's probably one of the most story focused RPGs over combat. Uh, going out on a limb here, but um, the, the appeal of the game does not lie in its combat. It's okay. You can you can get through it, you can like it's along the lines of Baldur's Gate, but it doesn't have the same level of party customization. Um, and as I said, yeah, this is, it's not as much about this. So uh, I remember looking at, like, at the time when I played through it, I looked at some recommendations, and actually, generally, the agreement was uh, from different sources and different way people, different people play, that, like, wisdom, intelligence, charisma are the most important attributes because they give you options. It's more about the dialogue options. So um, I'll just go. I know that you want to something in there, like have some above average wisdom. Intelligence I think also gives us access to spells. Um, charisma too. Let's make them kind of balanced. We have nine points left. Let's do a little strength, yeah. maybe another one to wisdom, because that one is really important. Um, we have four left, so let's do two for, oops, two for the 30, two for the constitution. This is, if you didn't recognize it, this is where the intro video ended. You'll wake on this slate and your first buddy. Okay, so this is Morte. As you can see, he's a like, 
cheerful guy, but who's he? Uh, so yeah, this is one of the games where the protagonist can't remember. I'll uh, actually like go through the dialogue a little faster because there's just so much dialogue in this game. Uh, let's see, what's your name? For skill, that's the last thing. Uh, you tired of wet rope? <laughs> I can't remember. Let's see. Trapped. So we are trapped. So plenty. So this game is a lot about the description of the characters. So all the graphics, of course, are like only as detailed as they could be in 640 by 480. A lot of detail is added through the character descriptions and the text. Kind of like in, in good books where you like, get an idea of a character in detail without ever seeing a picture. This is kind of what this game is striving to do with its text. Expecting the person who carved me up may come here to finish the job. How bad are they? Back. Whole tattoo gallery on your back. Tattoos on my back. Okay, so there's tattoos on your back, and they contain information. So there's. This is actually something that's gonna go on in the story. It's gonna keep coming up. I know you feel like you've been drinking a few cakes of stick wash, but you need to center yourself. Well, maybe your possession is a journal that will shed some light in the dark of the matter. A journal. Farrer can fill you in on the rest of the chain if he's not in that book already. Farrer. So, if he's not been killed or didn't pass for other reasons, he can fill me in. Farrer. Lose the journal or we'll be up to the sticks again. Whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happened to you. Okay, I have no idea who I am. What happens to me? Okay, so I don't know how I can tell someone. Read the journal and find her. One of my back hurts is damn not written there. Journal with me. Okay, so I guess getting out of here is the other challenge. And if Farrod is not inside this mortuary, we'll have to first get out and then find Farrod. And that all after finding the journal. We need the key. There's walking corpses, like the zombies or whatever. Mortis keepers use dead bodies as cheap labor. They're harmless and won't attack you unless you attack first. I don't want to kill them for a key. It says that the game is not really that much about fighting, so if there's a way around, we want to try. If we kill them at least, I'll have the rest because I keep us raised enough. Right. Okay. There should be shelves and maybe there's something I can fight with. Okay. I'm gonna look for one. Those cryptos are slow. can run, they can't. Okay, shift and left for them to run. Okay, this is my party. This is me, the name was one. 24, 24, 8 points. My day is 28 points. It's midnight. This is how the game is possible. 
all characters on the current action entrance from each of these kind of like all escaped. This is the dialogue of the window. This is the last dialogue of the closet. Lock your character. Oh, the scrolling is pretty fast. I wonder if I can actually change this inside the game with Jim Ripley. Let's take a look. It. Okay. Here, question mark. So I get some info here. Drive blood and other remains. Yeah, very morbid here. I just want to select the whole party. Here, like in Belder Skate, those light up. Bandages are standing to heal yourself. Let's open the inventory and take a look. Right click heals points. Stack a little. Okay. Done. And my fist is my only weapon. I have an eyeball equipped, apparently. As you can see. Yeah. There is like. I remember there's this. I think it. I like a reference to other games or like a parody of them that as far as I remember you never find any real armor in the game that you can wear. Like I think you find a new weapon, you get tattoos, you wear rings, but it's never about armor. So Stairs up down, preparation. You can even add notes. So here I can add this. So you see it has a different color, purple as opposed to red. You can see this is where I started. Okay. There's the world. Um, There's one of the zombie workers. Here is the scalpel. First weapon. Smuggle tactical advice. Maybe you could help me. Good advice. Hard to come by. Sure, both of you are selected from the the corpse. Okay, so you see with this tutorial, this is going to stop, I think, as long as we're done with mortuary. But this is essentially the tutorial stage. Glad you understand. Pressing the A key or Same sound as a pillar skate, uh, like that. Yeah, I, I, I can't really see very far. Let's first see what's in the Nothing. Let's see if I can talk with him. He's been there for some years. Let's ask. 
special. Floating skull. So Mort does not have oh and right click. So this one's got the key. have them in your inventory to unlock a door. I can somehow talk with him. Oh, here. See this weapon. Fists, don't ask. Bites. Okay, I can use the scroll wheel.
the doors then. Okay. Guess that's what we'll be doing. Let's select everyone. Yep. All right. Then. Done. Can't get All over right. here. We'll try the store. And the golf. The one remaining is the one to the very left. Okay, so we open our first door. Let's see if key disappeared. Okay. So here we can switch between characters. Okay, so I'm gonna save at this point. Um, okay, so this is going to be enables, of course. So, as you could see, it's possible to. I just saved so I'm to do this. It's possible to play this game very nicely so far on OpenBSD. As far as I read, there are some. It's not 100% implemented. There may be some things that can run uh, with GemRB. Uh, uh, from Planescape Torment, while well, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and I think Icewind Dale 1 are supposed to be fully supported. Um, if I continue the stream then we'll maybe find out where there might be limitations. Uh, so, so far the main one is the screen resolution. Um, and the video playback is not 100% but uh, inside the gameplay it's really nicely playable so yeah. Thanks, see you guys.